What happened to one of the gems in the crown of an architect recognized as the father of the American skyscraper? who first introduced innovative structural designs that allow buildings to reach further into the sky than ever before. Let's explore one of his lesser known surviving creations, the Deke's Shant, a historic fraternity meeting place in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and find out how it fares today. The story begins with William LeBaron Jenny, a famed architect and engineer. He was born on September 25, 1832 in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. He started school at Harvard, but later transferred to Paris to continue his education, where it's now known as École Centrale Paris, where he studied engineering and architecture with Gustave Eiffel, future architect of the Eiffel Tower. William returned to the U.S. in 1861 to join the Union Army as an engineer for Generals William T. Sherman and Ulysses S. Grant during the Civil War. One of his notable achievements was building a roadway along the Louisiana shore to shorten the transportation of supplies. It was an eight mile stretch over land where some parts were under two feet of water, so a bridge had to be constructed. The task was completed in only two days when Major William Tweedale arrived with three companies of the Bissell's Engineer Regiment. William Jenny reached the rank of captain before returning home. After the war, he moved to Chicago in 1867 to launch a firm focused on commercial buildings and urban planning. Later in his career, he became world renowned for designing the Home Insurance Company building the first skyscraper standing 10 stories tall at 138 feet in 1884, which was built the following year at the corner of La Salle and Monroe in downtown Chicago. What made the building unique was the use of iron and steel for the frame, which allowed the use of lighter materials for the walls since they were no longer dependent on to bear the entire weight of the building, which also resulted in a much lighter building overall. It was later demolished in 1931 to make way for the field building, now known as the LaSalle Bank Building. Unfortunately, many of his creations went the same fate. However, in 1889, he designed the Manhattan Building located at 431 South Dearborn Street in Chicago. It was completed in 1891. It stands 16 stories, remarkable for its time, and still exists today. It is the oldest building in the world to use a purely skeletal supporting structure. He became the first professor of architecture at the University of Michigan from 1876 to 1880. During that time, he designed the Shant for Delta Kappa Epsilon, which resembles the Grace Episcopal Church in Chicago, designed by Jenny himself just a few years earlier. After years of neglect, Deke dodged its first bullet in losing the Shant in 1971. The building fell into disrepair and vandalism until Wilbur V. Casgrain intervened. He was a charter member of the Ann Arbor Historical Commission and an alum of Deke. The fraternity lost their house in a fire in October of 1968, so they no longer had a place to meet. Fearing the demise of the Omicron chapter in Michigan, he endeavored to give them a new home in the old Victorian Gothic. He raised $60,000 to rehabilitate the building, which is about a half million dollars today. In the early 80s, Deke once again was on the verge of losing the shant due to financial troubles. But history repeated itself in David K. Easlick, also a Deke alum. Wait a second. I just noticed. He has the same initials as the fraternity. I wonder if that influences choice. Anyway, David led a fundraising effort that saved the building. The ownership was transferred to the Rampant Lion Foundation to support Deke's educational and charitable activities. He even gained support from the 38th president, Gerald Ford. David is currently a successful attorney working against fraternity hazing. In 2009, the foundation sold the shant to an investment firm for $180,000 and then signed a lease for the same property so the Omicron chapter of Deke can continue to use the building. Years later, in 2016, when the shant was deemed no longer suitable to house the fraternity's expanding administration, and the cost to maintain the structure grew beyond their means, the Rampant Lion Foundation Board of Trustees announced that the shant would be sold since the lease came to an end that same year. Unfortunately, there wasn't a Wilbur V. Casgrain to save the day, and David K. Easlick actually tried again to save the shant by starting a GoFundMe page to raise $700,000 in 2017 to possibly purchase the building and keep it in the Omicron chapter for Deke. The effort ended, however, and according to the foundation, Alumni from the Omicron chapter were given the first option to purchase the shant at a reduced price, but they did not exercise that option. I can understand why they weren't able to keep it. 
According to the GoFundMe page, Deke was only paying $15,000 in annual rent. That doesn't sound like enough revenue for maintaining a structure that is 140 years old. I don't get the impression the foundation was invested in the property, not financially, nor for its historical significance to the fraternity. I'm not going to try and pretend to understand the financial situation of the foundation and of the fraternity in general. Still, I am surprised with the prestige of an organization like Deke, who had five U.S. presidents, Rutherford B. Hayes, Theodore Roosevelt, George H. W. Bush, George W. Bush, and most importantly, Gerald Ford, who actually attended the University of Michigan and engraved a brick that still exists in the Shant today, could not raise the necessary funds. The Shant wasn't just another fraternity house. It was part of U.S. history and the last known surviving design by William Jenny in Michigan. But fortunately, all hope was not lost for the Shant when a church came to its rescue. The sale of the building went to Redeemer of Ann Arbor, an Acts 29 church. I would like to go into details about the network of churches under the Acts 29 umbrella, but that would span an entire video all by itself. I think this is possibly the best case scenario for the Shant if the fraternity was not able to hold on to it. A small congregation taking ownership of a building with this remarkable bit of history would be an incredibly proud achievement for them. And since it is a church, the public has an opportunity to go inside. Just be polite and maybe leave a donation on your way out. The Shant reminds me of a phoenix. When it appears, it may be on its deathbed. It is reborn again and again. As for William LeBaron Jenny, he passed away on January 15, 1907, and laid to rest in the Graceland Cemetery in Chicago. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time creating it. All of the little bits of history about the Shant grew larger and larger than I expected. If you have a moment, please click like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help the channel out. If you are connected in any way to the Shant via the fraternity, the school, or the church, or even if you simply pass by it during everyday life, I would really love to read your comments. Thank you.